Hello everyone, this is Dave Lunter and today I will be explaining PI, which is standing for Planetary Interaction. Now, to start with, you first need to put on your command center, which actually I have already done here, but you can do so from your cargo bay, you should have a command center, and when you open a planetary view, you will get the option here under the build to put a command center. So, uh, in here I want to mine Noble Metals. Okay, I guess I will be using this source. But I could also use this source, which is giving roughly 50% more. You can tell that because of the change in the graph. Like, you can set from here. You will probably start li like this but you can decrease the range and as you move it around you can look for the top point so this is the highest point available in this map as far as I can see oh here is a better one and you can use this method to look for the best position in the planet which will actually not going to be very useful since the planet itself is going to change in time resources will be depleted one place and more resources will be another for instance my home command center used to be in the top position which now is a little bit deserted anyhow so I will be using that place and as we will look for the carbon sources and I will be using this area now, uh, the goal is here that my construction plan is that I will extract noble metals, pro make them precious metals, carbon into biofuel, and combining those two, I will make biocells. So, that's the main goal here. Just clear it out. So, uh, I'm gonna first start by putting up some processing plants. I like to build it close to home because when you start the screen, uh, when you enter the planetary interaction view, you will immediately go to your command center. So you don't want to travel around. Holy crap! Anyhow, uh, you don't want to travel around a lot to find the best spot. But you can build this entire installation in the other side of the planet while your command center is still here. But re regardless, as we continue. So uh, notice here that I'm going to put them as close to the structures as possible. This is because I want to spend less CPU and power grid as possible. Okay, now that I built my basic facilities, I will now go to the next stage which is building the advanced facilities. I definitely would recommend building them close by because again less distance the material has to travel, the less you sacrifice from power and CPU. So, here's a good setup. And uh, I will now demonstrate, as we submit this one, uh, how to link them. You can con press control and once you click on a facility, you will immediately go to the linking menu. Now then you can link it like this, so what will go from here can go here but actually before I move on some of you may have noticed this is not a very efficient way to do this instead I would definitely recommend doing as little links as possible so I will first do like this then I will put up a spaceport which is going to be used as a buffering point in case uh, one of the resources is more than the other side. So this setup, just for the facilities, is the best setup you can have actually. So what will end up working is that first stuff from these two facilities and these two facilities will be collected here. Then advanced facilities will feed off from the material in the launch pad. This is the buffering side, so 
which side produces more will be displayed in the lunch pad storage area. Of course it will be saved for the future usage, which will evidently save you time and money. Well, just time. Anyhow, so uh, let's we now s set what kind of things we are going to be mining here. In here I want to mine noble metals. Like, let's we set one of them. And I will speed up and do the rest one. So, uh, noble metals turn into precious metals. I may install it and I route it to the main hub. And let me demonstrate this one. From here I will be making biocells. And also this will be transferred to the main launch pad. Now the stuff that is coming from here, which was the precious metals, will be directed to the biocell facility because I also want the material not to gather up here and be used in this facility. So this is the basic of buffering and usage. So I will speed up and do the rest. So uh, now that all the connections are done, let's we check if we are doing everything. So we have two incoming, which is from here and here, these precious metal facilities. Both of them, and we are we have outgoing too, which is going to the biocell production facilities, advanced industrial facilities. So let's we put up our extractor heads now. So uh, extractor control units. I wanna build one of these guys. So where do I want to build? We were looking for carbon, so I wanna build them here. Now, uh, if you have like a couple of sources, like if you want to mine from both here and here, it should only be in the range of the extractor head. So as close as the home and also containing both sides would be efficient way to do this. But now I have only this place in, in mind, so I will do like this. Get close this as possible while still in the range. The closer you build it to the home, the better actually. But right now I have an abundance here, which I can change later on. So I will build it here. Now, if I take a, make a direct link, it will be useless because what I will be producing here will some of it go to waste because you are going to be exactly way more faster than you can consume. So uh, what I'm going to do is build a storage facility in here. This is actually going to be also working to decrease the load on this main area from passage from this area to production area, extraction area to production area. Uh, I'm doing that because I don't want to continue to upgrade the link and spend more power grid and CPU. You might even actually spend more power grid and CPU on the upgrading the link than and putting compared to the building's extra storage facility here. So I'm going to build it here, which is rather simple. And again to the closest one. So this is the closest, I build it here. This means that I will be extracting here and storing them here. This is going to be the buffer area. And the facilities here will be using this. Now let's remake it for the noble metals also. So uh, when you are scanning, make sure that you distribute them equally, like you don't want to mine 100,000 units of product A and just 2,000 units of product B. This will create an imbalance and one of the buffers will be eventually overloaded and you will start losing money and time. Profit. So, okay, let's we start with this guy. Uh, first I had to submit this fucker. Okay, so what are we mining here? We are mining noble metals. So uh, as default as we give four units. I'm I like to make it like an entire day. Two days. 
I will update it once a day, but two days will give me a margin of, you know, if I, in case I missed the, the update, there's an update, or I missed the extraction update, updating them. Oh, fuck that. Okay, so here we have the extractors. I'm placing them one in the middle to the best spot. But if your skills are not high enough to position a good spot, move your mouse around here. You'll be seeing an in input of the resources. You can find the high spot like this. So as you can see, I'm now entering 50 here, 30, 49 here, 50, 49. So he I know that this place is the high point. Up, down. So uh, I'm here highest. Well, my skills are rather good, so I will be getting this kind of result anyhow. So, uh, okay. We yeah, have built these two here. Okay, we are getting 4,400 4, units from this side. Let's me install this one. And let's we move on to here. We will also put four on a two-day cycle. Mining carbon. Putting it on a good ratio. Probably I will have less carbon extractors than uh, noble metal because as you can see I had to increase my scanning bar to see the top point, meaning that there is more carbon than noble metals. As you can see it's already in the seven thousands so probably I will have twice the number of noble metal extractors so here I have made a rather similar setup clo as close as possible and I'm getting ten ten thousand units so I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna put more on this side. Let's see if we can reach the 10,000. So, uh, I can get it up to 8,700. By removing one from here, it will decrease it because there is 4 divided by 4, the 10,000, and you can get, you will see that each one of these extractors is getting approximately 2,500 units. So by deleting one, I will decrease this area, this extractor to 7,500. And now that one will take the lead. So this is a good balance right now, I would say. Because if you start changing, it will increase the imbalance. Of course, you can use math and stuff to calculate this more efficiently, but well, we are not dealing with thousands of extractors here. So. Uh, Step two, we are going to link these one. Actually, we are only we will route the mined material to our storage facility. Turns out we didn't need it to update, upgrade it. And from uh, let's check if we need to upgrade this one. We are getting it, and let's we see. There we go. We need to upgrade this one. As you can see. There's a red indicator which is saying that with current extraction, the link is at one needs to be 165 percent capacity or fuck that. So what we do is simple: click on the link, you will get the link. Then click upgrade. It will drop down how much upgrade will cost. Of course, the longer the link, the more CPU and power grade you will spend. For example, upgrading this link will be much more expensive than upgrading this little link here. So I basically upgrade it. I don't need to upgrade this one. As you can imagine, this is bound by the how much units these two facilities will require. So I know that it won't exceed to 100% capacity. But in here, since this is a, the buffer spot, the area here will be filled. I will need to upgrade it. Of course, this means that even if I missed a couple of days, 
the buffer point, if there is enough material here, it will keep the facility going at 100% for a couple of days, given that both facilities have enough to make it run that long. So that's the importance of the buffer points. So I will make the remaining links. It was it's similar with the launchpad links, which I showed in the beginning. So here we go. As you can see, once we upgraded it, it got upgraded to the 100% plus 100% capacity. So now it's going to show the half of what we need. So it's now showing 68% capacity. We double click and voila, it's taking it. Remember, you, for example, when updating the extractor heads, you don't need to click here and then click survey and then etc. You just need to double click and it will immediately open the survey. Okay, I did all the extractors here. So, as we see, how it goes. Okay, so this is basic planetary interaction with nice efficiency. I will let it run a little bit, a while, and let's see what kind of buffer we can get. Okay, a couple of reminders. Upgrade levels. Uh, when you first put up the installation, always upgrade it as much as you can, then start your build. And before you place the extractor heads, always first build the entire installation, because you don't want to then waste time on, oh, let's we, up let's we cancel this one, and put up a storage facility here, and we still have power, blah, blah, blah. And another thing, if you are in the mood to extract it from the planet as soon as possible, that's a terrible idea. Because the more you produce, the more, val the more value per meter cube increases. Okay, we let some time pass, and what do we have? Well, our buffers space has started gathering stuff so we check it out and we see that 5% or 10% is full right now this means that uh, in the future event if I, in case I forget to reschedule these ones for two days the facilities here will be sucking off from the stored material in the buffer area now also this, you will notice that this side has not generated anything. The storage facility is empty. And this is because the input from here to the storage facility is less than the output. So, uh, but as you can see here actually, that we are a little bit generating a buffer here. This means that while it's slower, it will be over time exceed and start to fill the buffer. Now on another note, uh, keep in mind that when you have a lot of buffer stored up and you think that okay I'm not gonna to have any changes so I might as well do something with this buffer. So what you can do is you can take this material here and expedite transfer transfer it to the main hub which for your launch pad and from here you can launch it to the space and then sell it on the market this is extra profit which you will actually accumulate as you play with the PI this boat goes like uh, in case when there is not enough resources on this side this side will continue to produce but this means that there will be an extra of biofuel so again the same factor goes do not sell the stuff inside the first storage area because this means that you will sell them more in a raw state and will not make any more profit per meter cubic area 
and instead wait for them to or either not wait or use them up when they are passing through the facilities and sell them in a form of biofield for this instance but right now uh, our production is very balanced we are producing bio cells in a regular pace okay and this is a planet for 100 percent production uh, as you can see there is no extraction going on here all the resources that this planet uses is coming from outside so these two facilities are is a input to this facility and this one is the output area now this these are advanced facilities uh, holding the compounds I not able to put together in a single planet so I'm transferring them all together here and then combining them and creating something else to be used in the main production area so it's not very complex when you know what you're doing so if you make a plan beforehand and a little bit don't mind about the design it's all good so this is another aspect of planetary interaction well, have a nice day, fly safe fucking fun in ours but the difference is that in here we have nothing and in here we have something okay that's not very wise way to say it uh, place it as close as possible because uh, that way you who the fuck this shit. Advanced facilities. It means that when I want to create a it means that when I want to create oh fuck. Hello everyone, uh, we are back. Okay, right now I wanna show you guys and girls what this buffering means. So here we have nothing. Fuck. Given value to the more to the uh, blue side, that way you will see a more detailed resolution and not just the max because this area is considered as the. Oh, come on!